guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, recently, we had a bout of hands, foot, mouth disease that hit our house, which has kept me pretty busy, that with wedding planning and all this other fun stuff. Um, and in the process of my son getting hands, foot, mouth disease, his groin was predominantly affected. Um, he, it was actually where the spots first showed up because yes, hands, foot, mouth disease can affect the diaper region. Um, and he got some really gnarly looking blisters and I wanted to put some salve, wanted to help it heal, which worked great by the way. And the um, salve though wasn't staying well on his thighs because his thighs were outside of the diaper cover and was rubbing against the diaper cover and it was just rubbing the salve off. Plus he seemed a little irritated by him, um, by the waist of the diaper because his blistering was coming up to his lower belly. So to make him more comfortable, I whipped out the two wool covers I still have. Um, you might recognize this one, although it's inside out. There's the goofy one that he wore last August for Disney. He still fits in it. Not over a nighttime diaper, although this isn't a thick enough wool cover for nighttime, but it, it still fits him. So it's perfect for over a daytime diaper. He looks so cute in it. My husband was like, how, how did we get like three goofy covers like he's been wearing i was like that's the same one he's like but he's been wearing it like every day i'm like that's the beauty of wool so yes it's true wool can be worn over and over and over again before it gets washed and that's one thing that makes wool really great yes it takes a little bit of hands-on and a little bit of time it really only takes a little bit of time to wash these um like actual hands-on um action <laughs> but um, then you don't have to wash it for a while. How do you know when to wash it? When it starts to smell when it's dry is when you should wash it. Wool, if you ask me in my opinion, if you put your face up against wool when it's wet, it's gonna stink. Whether it's clean or dry, it just stinks. Well, I think wool smells bad. Um, it's not one of those smells that you can smell across the room. You have to have your face against it. So when it's dry, like this one's dry, and the butt area actually smells really nice. <laughs> it has a little bit of a lavender scent from the eucalyptus that I used last time I laundered it. But the front, where most of the pee is, because he's a little boy, has a slight, slight urine smell. Honestly, I could probably use this a couple more times before washing it, but I'm gonna wash it anyway, since I'm already doing this anyhow, because my other one, this one, smells very strongly of urine. He used it all week long and he was do it was doing great holding up and then on the last day before I switched him back to regular covers he had like a massive like pee like just he flooded his diaper and it soaked this and so evidently to the point where it's now soiled and ready to be washed so this smells like urine so that's how you can tell I mean it dried and it smells like urine so that's how you can tell it needs to be washed now how do you wash them? This is where it scares a lot of people, but it's really not that scary, I promise you. Now, when it comes to what you should use to wash, um, I use, I've got my little wool wash kit that I keep underneath my sink. Really handy, by the way. And I use a basin. I could just fill my sink, but I don't ever feel like doing that because a lot of times what ends up happening is I fill my sink, I put wool covers in there and they're soaking away. And then it's like, oh crap, I need to do something. Like I need to wash my hands or wash dishes or something. By the way, my sink is disgusting. So sorry about that. So I like to use a container so I can set it in the sink if I want, but I can take it out and move it if I need to access my sink. You can also use a laundry sink if you have one. Now, as far as what you use to wash your wool with, this is what what I have in mind. So I've got eucalyptus because I really highly recommend eucalyptus. I love it. It works really well. Um, what's really nice about eucalyptus is if you're like me where you use your wool kind of sparingly and then you find yourself needing to wash it and you're afraid you might forget some fine details like, oh, how long should I let this soak for? This has detailed instructions on the back. And you can actually kind of go off these instructions too for regardless of what you use to launder your um, wool with. So um, I, I have plenty of eucalyptus, but I also have, I have a little mason jar. It's designated for um, disintegrating the lanolin. If I have to lanolize, you can use this little tube of lanolin that you can get at, for um, breastfeeding. Um, that's actually what I have left over from when I was breastfeeding. And because that's obviously almost empty, I've got another little container of lanolin that I picked up when I grabbed my eucalyptus. Because that's in a container and not in a squeeze tube, I have a tiny little metal baby spoon in here. This is actually like 
This was a regular baby spoon, it just lost the rubberized end, and I think it's perfect for scooping out a pea-sized amount of lanolin, which is, by the way, all you need to lanolize one cover is about a pea-sized amount. Now, I've also got these little sample containers in here, because frankly, like, especially the baby shampoo, I never use baby shampoo. I always just, I mean, look, head to toe wash. Why do I need this? Okay, so that's just my two cents. So I always use baby wash, but I, and I always have these samples that I don't use. You can use either of these two to wash your wool. Now, if you don't have either of these or eucalyn, you can always just use a bar of soap and literally just rub it against the material to kind of lather it up and let it soak. Um, that works just as well. Um, that's actually really good for spot treating if your cover is actually soiled with stools. But otherwise, um, I highly recommend, and most people who have babies have baby wash, and you can use baby wash. It's really quite simple. I, I normally like to try to keep these in separate containers if I wash them, but they can go in the same container. I am, however, going to analyze them again just to show you how to do it. Um, but um, what's nice about using the eucalyn, which is why I recommend it, is several things. One, it gives you in detailed instructions on how to do it. Even if you want to use your machine, although I recommend washing by hand for the sake of the longevity of your wool covers, I'm always afraid my machine's going to eat my cover. Um, it gives you detailed instructions. This is a huge reason why I like it too. No need to rinse. Now rinsing is not hard by any means, but just the fact that you don't have to do it is nice. And then the fact that it also contains lanolin. It's lanolin enriched. This means that you don't have to lanolize as often because every time you wash with this eucalyn, it leaves lanolin behind in your cover so that you don't have to lanolize as frequently. But if you're ever not sure when you should lanolize again, you can always just lanolize every like three to four washes, which if you only have to wash them like once a week, it's like once a month you have to lanolize. And it's easy and I'll show you how to do it. So. I'm not going to use the eucalyn today, even though it's massively easy to use, because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It tells you what to do. Um, I'm going to show you, I don't, I'm not going to use bar soap because I don't have any more. I actually ran out of ivory soap and I have more coming in the mail, so I don't have any with me. But I am going to use some baby soap to wash this with. Now, if you want to wash them, if they smell like ammonia, you're going to want to put some tepid water in there and then a splash of vinegar and let them just soak in the vinegar. The vinegar is going to alter the pH of the water and help draw that ammonia out. But if it doesn't smell like ammonia and it just smells like urine, we can go ahead and start washing them. So we're going to start by not freaking out our covers by shocking them with hot or cold water. A lot of people are worried about um, damaging or ruining their wool with hot or cold water. You need tepid water. But the thing is, it's actually, you have to have really hot or really cold water to shock your wool and make it do stupid things like felt or lose its elasticity and all that, and shrink and all that stuff that comes with felting. So it's really kind of, I usually just warm water it. Like this is um, cool to the touch, but slightly warmer. So I would say that's probably good. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is put your basin in there. Let's start filling up with tepid water. Don't worry if it's a little warmer or a little cooler. It's not gonna freak your wool out. It's only if you use really hot or really cold water that it's gonna get all angry. Now, how much soap you use depends on how much uh, or how soiled your wool is. I'm doing two wool covers. One is very lightly soiled and the other is very heavily soiled. You know what, actually I'm gonna do both separate. I'm gonna show you how to use the eucalyn and the soap because my one wool cover is relatively, the goofy wool cover is really, really, um, what's the word? Soiled, like with urine, smells of urine. So there's a hair in here driving me nuts. Get out of there. Ugh, it was one of my husband's beard hairs or mustache hairs or so that hate those. Anyways, so we're just going to put a squeeze in. It's not a real science, just maybe a teaspoon-ish. I'm going to squish it around and suds it up, make sure it's dispersed into the water. And we're going to put our wool right on in. And we're just going to push it underneath the water. And we're just going to gently kind of squeeze it. I'm doing this one-handed. I like to normally do it two-handed. Two-handed? 
that didn't seem right to me for some reason. Anyways, sorry. Um, so I'm just gently squeezing it to get the water and the soap in. And that's all there is to that. We're gonna let that soak for 15 minutes. Now the reason I decided I was gonna go ahead and use the eucalyptus for this next cover is simply because it dawned on me, I only really wanna lanolize the goofy cover. The Dizano one doesn't need to be lanolized again, and because it doesn't really need to be lanolized, I figured I might as well wash it with the eucalyptus since the eucalyptus has a little bit of lanolin in it, just to help keep it up to par and working better, especially since it's my overnight diaper cover, my overnight wool cover. So when it comes to washing, like I said, it's very lightly soiled. So like for a normal or lightly soiled, I would say probably just a cap full of lanolin, if that is all you need. Cat full probably if it smells like urine enough. I'm using about maybe two thirds of a cat full because it's really not that um, soiled. It barely smells. So I'm gonna go ahead and swish the cap into the water and swish the water to get the eucalyptus dissolved in. It smells like, it smells nice. It smells like um, lavender. I got the lavender scent. You can get unscented though. So. Um, it's normal when you lanolize things, and especially if you're using eucalyptus, for your fingers to have almost a slightly, like, um, like, for lack of better words, like a rubbery feeling, because that's just the lanolin on your hands. Like, it leaves it kind of weird. Can you hear that? That kind of mess. Anyways, so in goes the cover. I just press it. This is what I normally do. I just press it down against the bottom of the basin. Again, I use basin so I can get it out of my sink. And just press it in. And this is going to soak. Because this one's not very soiled at all, and I'm going to just soak it for the minimum time, which is 15 minutes, which is as long as Goofy is going to be soaking for. So I will be back in 15 minutes. But of course I forgot to mention, some people are worried about the fact that it's poking up. If that concerns you, you can always just weigh it down with something. So, let me see, what do I got? Some big spoons. You can just like plop some spoons onto it or something and try to just, you know, whatever you need to do to make it stay down into the water better if you want helps to get some of the air out before you do that, but it's gonna, some of it's gonna float. So it doesn't hurt um, if you're gonna be soaking it to maybe use even a couple more than that. Um, you wanna keep it under the water. I don't think it's quite as important when you're washing though, as much as when you're lanolizing to make sure it stays in the water. If it floats and you don't feel like shoving anything in there, you can always just come and rotate it, whether you're washing it or lanolizing, just flip it over. So it has been 15 minutes, and we're gonna start with Goofy since we started with him earlier and since he needs to lanolize too. So I'm gonna jostle him a little bit more in there. And then what I'm gonna do is fold, fold it in half and in half again, and cradle the entire thing lifted out of the water. You don't wanna hold wool by like one portion or even by the whole waist or anything. You want to cradle as much as possible when it's wet because it can stretch. So it's another rule with handling wool. Don't just let it dangle by its weight when it's filled with water like this. And we're just going to press as much water out as possible. We don't want to wring it. We just want to fold it and press. So there we go. Now we're going to set that aside and we're going to dump this water out. And get some of the extra soap out of here. And now my phone is ringing. Hooray, my sister-in-law's coming over. Anyways, so <laughs> um, I'm just gonna lay this down into the cool water. There we go, that's better. And just kind of open it up and massage it in there just so we can give it a rinse. What I'm going to do is give it a smell and see how it smells. So it smells like wet wool and um, 
baby soap. It does not smell like urine. So yay! I'm gonna take that as it's clean. So get some water out. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna dump this simply because this is what I rinsed in even though it's obviously not really sudsy or anything. But you know, fresh water, why not? Now lanolizing. Lanolizing is also done with tepid water. So we want to get some tepid water into our basin. But what makes it lanolized, of course, is lanolin. Now, if you have the tube, you can just squeeze out a pea-sized amount. Mine's almost empty, so I'm going to use some of the lanolin in this container just because I'm too lazy to try to force squeeze all that out. And we want to fill this up with some warm water. Obviously, with my goofy folded on the side. By the way, I, it, it warrants mentioning, and I don't remember if I said it earlier, when you're washing your wool, turn it inside out. And especially if you're lanolizing it, you want the lanolin to come in contact with the inside, not the outside. It would almost defy the point to put it on the outside. Not that it, well, it just makes sense to turn it inside out, okay? Inside out. When you're washing wool and when you're, you know, it just makes more sense. So anyhow, now, I've got my designated container, any kind of container will do. I'm going to put the faucet over here. I'm going to get my water as hot as possible. And I'm going to put some hot water into this container. The hot water is going to dissolve the lanolin. That's pretty hot. So we just need some water, any kind of amount of water. We're going to take a little bit of our soap. The soap is going to do nothing but help break down the lanolin. Just a tiny squirt, like a tiny squirt of soap and that's just going to help the lanolin to break down, break apart, kind of create an emulsion really, kind of like making a vinaigrette, a really disgusting wool washing vinaigrette something. Anyways, so here's the lanolin. You only need about a pea size amount, okay? And just kind of get that into the water. Eww. All right, and then this is where I kind of, don't mind me, I'm off camera swizzling the spoon in there trying to get some of the lanolin off of the spoon and into the water. So anyhow, that goes in there. And you want a container with a lid because you're gonna have to shake this up. You wanna get that lanolin completely dissolved, broken down. You don't wanna see a big chunk of lanolin in there. So we're gonna shake, 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 shake. Now if you shake it all up and you get all mad because you can see a big old clump of lanolin in there, just dump some of that water into your tepid water, most of it at least, and top back off with some more hot water if you need to. It's not that big of a deal. Some more hot water and another shake. If I can get the lid on, that would be great. And of course, you're going to want to use a watertight container to do this or you're going to be a big hot mess. I'm going to get my water back to tepid while I shake, 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 shake. So, you know, another 40 seconds later, it, it looks like it's pretty dissolved. And we're just going to dump it in, kind of give it a swizzle in the water to get most of that lanolin out. And uh, that little bit of hot water is not going to make your water so hot that it, you know, won't. Oh, and that's another thing. When I store this, I actually don't store it with the lid secure because it's wet. I usually dry it first and then I leave the lid open. Anyhow, so now that we've got our lanolin in there, we're going to simply take our wool cover, open it up completely, and submerge it into the water. Now, give it a couple squeezes. Some things to keep in mind that you can do. You can take a touch of lanolin on your finger and spot treat sections that you want especially lanolized. Like for me, with having a little boy, um, it might be of benefit for me to put a little extra lanolin in the front. I've never really found that necessary, but just something to keep in mind that you can do. And then just let that sit underneath the water. If you have any floating issues, like for me, it's usually just the leg cuffs and the um, waistband with this diaper, and I don't mind if that's not entirely submerged. Sir! So we're gonna, he's getting all fussy, so I gotta take care of him, but we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes.
Now that this has been soaking long enough, uh, um, the nice part about the eucalyptus, like I said, is all we have to do is um, press out the water and it doesn't need any rinsing. So we're going to fold it all up and lift it out, supporting its whole weight, and just press out as much water as possible. Now one thing you can do, you can um, uh, spin it, like um, if you have a salad spinner or something and you want to spin out the extra moisture out, you can. Or what I'm going to do is roll it up in a towel to get the extra moisture out. And so now here's my goofy cover. It's been sitting in the lanolin for, I don't know, actually probably for about 40 minutes because of uh, my sister-in-law came by. So um, if you have a lot of lanolin in here and some of it accumulates along the like water line, it's okay. It's not like it's not working or something. So what we're going to do is fold it up, bring it out, supporting its whole weight, and we're just going to press out as much as we can. It might have that bit of a tacky feeling, you know, like that feel because of uh, that's the lanolin and that's a good thing. So we're not going to wring it. We can squeeze it gently, but we're not going to, okay, I'm actually squeezing it pretty hard, but I mean like no twisting or distorting or pulling at it too much. So that's all there is to that. And now we just got to roll them in a towel to help them dry up a little more. I've got them laying right now on just my regular like laundry rack, but I've used a basket turned on its side. I've used a section of baby gate. Um, I've used a table <laughs> in the sunlight. Um, the only thing is you really don't want these hanging simply because it'll pull and distort. However you have it hanging, it will distort. So you want to make sure it lays flat to dry. If you lay it flat on a baby gate or on um, a basket or anything like this has a lot of airflow underneath and so I'm probably not going to have to rotate them but if you're laying them on a surface that is limited restricted airflow underneath it's always a good idea to give them a flip every once in a while to get them to dry better so that's all there really is to it when they're completely dry you can always um when they feel dry go ahead and invert them out the right way make sure the inside which is actually technically the outside because they're inside out feels dry and if it feels all dry then it's good to go so that's basically it with wool it's it seems like a process but it's not and it seems really intimidating because you have to be careful that your water's not too hot or cold and you have to be careful not to stretch the wool but that's really all there is to it wool is very simple to use it's very easy to wash it seems intimidating because it's just a, it's just things that we're not familiar with typically so it's but it's there's no there's no real learning curve to it it's very 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 easy to learn it's just as straightforward as I showed you and wool is um, can be a little bit pricey of an investment depending on the quality and what kind of cover you get but they're definitely something you can DIY yourself and I'm going to actually attempt to make some wool covers as well myself um, and if I do make one I will definitely be posting a video um, about that but very easy to care for. You don't have to wash them as often. So this isn't something you're doing like every day at the end of the day. So that that's another thing that makes wool so nice. If you, unless it gets soiled, like stools on it, or it starts to smell like urine, you can use it, let it air dry, and it self-cleans because of the lanolin. So wool's really neat. I hope you give wool a try. I also hope that this video was helpful to you. And if you thought so, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in some more helpful videos about cloth diapering and some tips and some useful information, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.